like to introduce you to the first designer, my favorite designer, this guy. See, this guy was solving a problem of food supply. The delicious termites that lived in these mounds, they come out every so often. Not enough to make a proper snack, though. It'd be like eating popcorn one kernel at a time. When all you really want is a sandwich. So he had to think of food in a completely different way. He had to think of the objects in his surroundings differently than he's ever seen them. So in that moment, he saw a blade of grass, and he imagined it as a fishing pole. So he weaved it into the termite mound, and sure enough, termites attacked that blade of grass and made a proper snack for our friend there. So this is such a successful tool that we still see it today, generations later. Probably the most successful product of all time. But what's so successful about it is that this is the first incidence of lateral thinking that we can visualize. It's a creative problem solving technique that we use every day. But the first instance, the catalyst, was food. And that's what's really interesting here. And this process we do every day when we open up our refrigerator, we think, how many things can I make with the supplies I have just right here? What can I do with these ingredients? We do a lot of things with tomatoes. Corn's even better. <laughs> so our team at Freight Farms is rethinking food supply. How else can we do this? Because we know we're having the same problem as that first designer. Food supply is down. That's because the current state of our food supply is unsustainable. This is a picture of a rainforest in Brazil, over 26 years being turned into commercial farming. And over farming depletes our resources of land and water. And the reason this happens is because commercial agriculture can only be supported in certain climates. So places like New England need to ship food from these places to cities and rural areas that can't grow a full season. So this whole process actually makes up about a third of the carbon footprint we're leaving on the world. And even with this, we're only feeding about half the population. So if we want to make three meals a day for all seven billion people, we need to generate enough food for 21 billion meals. That's quite a lot of meals. So the number if you just started counting to right now, it would take you eight lifetimes just to get to. So the methods we have right now aren't sustainable. We need to rethink commercial agriculture. What's next? I'm a big fan of urban farming, and so are quite a bit of cat artists online. But in 2005, we teamed up with Boston Land School to create a awesome greenhouse on their already started green roof project. They were so excited about it, they were a lot less excited about the price of this so-called greenhouse. Because what we were finding is, like so many other places in Boston, the rooftops weren't built to be load-bearing. And roofs all over the world were either built for weather or barely roofs at all. So we knew if we wanted to introduce a new infrastructure for food supply, we needed to look beyond the greenhouse structure, beyond traditional farming. And we're reminded of the first designer. How could we repurpose something in our environment? How could we take an object and make it a sustainable way to feed the future generations? And that object for us was the 40 by 8 shipping container. This is a structure that's not only weatherproof, but it's universal. And we saw them everywhere. In every country, every city, every area we wanted to bring food, we found shipping containers. And we even found ones that were insulated. So we could create the perfect growing environment inside. So we know we still need to do a little bit more thinking around how we're going to grow plants inside a shipping container. So we started with some key elements, the substrate, lighting, climate, and nutrients. And with a vertical hydroponic system, we could provide all the nutrients that it needed with 90% less water, no herbicides, and no pesticides. We're very excited about this. So then we retrofitted the inside with environmental controls and introduced LED lighting. That's why you'll see this pink light. It's because that gives the perfect wavelength and spectrum of light that those plants need. And they loved it. 
So they were loving it so much that we decided we could design even further and get more plants in our system. Today, we're on track to make 13,000 pounds a year out of one container of basil. Yeah. In terms of lettuce, that's the equivalent of one acre of farming out of one container. So the entire Lincoln School could be fed off of just one container. And what we're most proud of, it only takes one person to operate commercial farming at this scale. With the help of automated and monitoring technology. I'll show you just how easy it is. Hey guys, we're here at a freight farm in Worcester, Massachusetts. Let's take a look inside. All right, let's get some plants into the system. We already have seven other seedlings in here ready to go. So I'll put this one last one in, and we'll start growing. We just put these into place, and all we have to do now is turn on the lights, and then we'll be ready to grow. Cool. Yeah. So today, we're stacking up production for distributors, schools, and working with farmers in disaster relief to bring food everywhere. We're looking at leafy varieties, fine varieties, and even looking at potential of mushrooms in these systems. So now whether you're in an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean or the middle of nowhere, food isn't too far away. So we're going from a system that once looked like this to a local food hub that looks more like this. And we're really excited about that. So what I want to leave you with today is an idea that We've been transforming all of our natural resources into the cities, the roads, the cars, the clothes, and the seats that you're sitting in right now. There's a finite amount of resources in the world. And by repurposing the objects around us, we can create a more sustainable future. Mm -hmm.